In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use probably the most simple 3D render edit program in order to change up STL files to suit your needs. So as many of you know, I am working on my HeroQuest board and in the pursuit of creating that board, I was trying to figure out, is there a way that I could modify other dungeon systems so that they could be used with Dragon's Rest? If you haven't seen my comparison video between the different dungeon systems, go ahead and click here. Really before this, I didn't know anything about 3D rendering. All I did was find pre-made objects that was readily available on Thingiverse or through sale and basically use what was available. But I was introduced to 3D Builder and found the software to be so intuitive, I really didn't have to watch a YouTube video or tutorial or anything like that. I could intuitively work my way through in doing some really basic stuff. Now. I do think that 3D Builder is very, very simple. And if I were to make my own objects or try to render, I would use uh, even something like Tinkercad, which in and of itself is more simple. But I think 3D Builder is even simpler than that. So in a very elementary sense, 3D Builder is really for beginners that are doing very minor changes to existing STL files. If I were gonna make my own custom pieces, I would use Tinkercad or some other programs that have more features to it. But for my purposes in adapting pieces to work with Dragon's Rest, 3D Builder is perfect because it has the features that I want and need and it's not very difficult to use. So here we have the basic walls from Dragon's Rest, which I really like a lot to be my default wall. But in some rooms, like this boss room here in the center, uh, I wanted to be able to use some of the more elaborate dungeon set pieces. And so here we have two walls. This is from Forbidden Prince and was able to modify these to slice off the bottom part where the lock system goes in place and replace it with the holes that are the same as the ones that come with Dragon's Rest. And as well, I have here some files from Dungeon Works, and I like their walls a lot. A couple of my viewers told me about Dungeon Works, and I did purchase this crypt set. And again, I'm using this for my boss room, and I really like the details that are on here. The nice thing about Dungeon Works is that they actually do have an inch and a half wall, which is perfect because all of the tiles in Dragon's Rest does have our inch and a half wide grid system. So this size works perfectly. Otherwise, like I did here with Forbidden Prints, which has a two inch wide base wall, I had to splice these together so that this is six inches across. Ian recently created a new file where you can just push the five millimeter magnetic balls into the base of the walls without having to have the added burden of creating these clips that you push in here. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can place these magnetic ball holders into any system that you want. Now I did the clip system here because it was before Ian came out with this new system, but um, you can basically convert any system that you currently have to fit all the other systems as well. So I'm really excited about that. And here you can see I did make modifications to Ian's base wall. I wanted some traps that I could use. And here I have a saw trap uh, that is from Fat Dragon Games. And I also have these spikes. And in order to do both of these things, I had to slice into the original file so that I could slot this uh, saw blade in. And then here create holes so that I could put these toothpicks in uh, this trap. So a lot of different things that you can do with just a little bit of modification. So I hope that this video helps you out with that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just Google 3D Builder and go over and click on the result, which should be Microsoft. And you can just click here and get it for free. And the thing I like about it is you're not downloading a bunch of crap with it. And once you download, go ahead and open it up. And we're gonna do a new scene here. And all you have to do is uh, find the file that you want. And so I'm just gonna use this as a base and drag it over here. And what we're gonna do is capture this magnetic hole so that we can 
basically adapt it to work with the Dragon Thrust system. So this is what you're going to do. First, go ahead and uh, agree to import the model. And then you want to insert an object. And let's go ahead and pick a cylinder. It can be a cube too if you want. But basically, we want to resize it. So come down here, and this is the resize button. And you can just grab a corner and just shrink it down like this if you want. Um, you can, if you uncheck the lock mechanism, you can change different sides of it like this back and forth, right? And the height, um, which is typically what I do. But let's go ahead and resize the whole thing to be small enough. And so what we're trying to do is just get enough mass that it is going to fill up that spot where the magnetic hole is at. So just work with it until you get it to the size that you want. And then if you want to move it around, click these buttons here. This is a rotate button. But in essence, you want to be able to fill up that hole. And here's sort of a cool feature. You know, you can slip it in there, but not really tell whether or not you're filling up that hole or not. That's down here. See, there is a little section here that's not being filled up yet. Let me zoom in for you there. So again, we can manipulate the size of it so that it does fit and fill that hole in like this. And then I'm not 100% sure whether or not I got the height correct. So uh, there's a view feature here that works really well. So go up here to view and then hit x-ray and this will give you a sense of whether or not you have the right height. And as you can tell here, see this ball? Uh, I'm still not covering it so I'm going to go ahead and pull it up until it completely covers that ball. And so this x-ray is showing that my shape does actually fit the entire uh, magnetic hole that Ian has produced in this model. So once that happens, I can go ahead and click off X-ray and go to Object or Edit. And what I'm going to do is with my figure already selected, but not, not the figure of the wall, uh, I'm going to hit Subtract. So in, one of the things in this program that you have to understand is when you select a model, and right now I'm selected on the wall as well as my um, sphere, uh, both of these models are selected. To unselect something, you just click on it again. And so, or over here, you can click on it to select or unselect. What you want to do is you want to select the wall and make sure that you've unselected your sphere. And then hit subtract, because it's going to subtract whatever space that the wall has with my sphere. So let's go ahead and hit subtract. And what is left behind is the negative of the shape and the hole for the magnetic ball. And that's basically what I wanted to capture uh, because now this is going to be my mold that I'm going to use for my other pieces. So let's go ahead now at this point, I'll multiply it a couple of times because I don't want to lose the shape. And you can do it up here with copy and paste. And paste a couple of them for now. So let's go ahead and import in this wall and just click and drag it over. And it will import it in. You click import model and here you have it. Now see how it has this clip system and we have to get rid of that first. So all I'm going to do is See how none of these are selected, so we're only affecting this model. Go ahead to edit, and then you want to split the model. And so just drag this up and down like this until you get it to where you want it to split. So let's zoom in, and basically I'm going to split it right here, where it looks like um, the model, the base of the model for the clip system starts. So. I'll, you can keep the bottom 
where once you split it, it'll keep the bottom part, keep the top, or you can opt to keep both. Obviously, we just want to keep the top section, so go ahead and hit split. And now the model has been freed up from the clip system here at the bottom. And so I'll go ahead and put it on the platform. Also, something I want to do is cover up these lock, open lock holes because I don't use that system. So the way that I cover up the holes is again, I use insert and this time I'm gonna pull in the cube and basically fill in those spots. And so I'll resize this so that it's basically the width of the wall and I will need to, here let's see how big it is. So I'll pull it over. Yeah, it's a little bit too wide, right? But it will sort of lock into place so that it matches one edge. So that all I have to do is resize this edge over here. And I can just go like this until it's about where I need it to be. And then you can sort of tell by um, clicking off and seeing how close the edge is here. And, that, and that's pretty close. Uh, here it's just covering up the holes and that's fine, I don't really care. If you want, you can uh, push it in a little bit more so it's just like this. If you're picky like that, um, I don't really care, but that's good enough, it's filling up the holes. Now something that's important to do before we cut out the spaces for the magnets at the bottom is you want to click on both things. So again, I have my wall selected as well as my um, filler piece and go back up here to edit and click merge. And what that does is it merges the two pieces so that now they're one. And that's important to do. Otherwise, when it comes time to cut out these sections, it gets a little bit goofy. But this way, this is now one solid piece. And then what we want to do now is go ahead and put in these uh, magnetic holders at the bottom. Because right now, oops, I'm still on resize. That's what happened. So I will undo by hitting Control Z. And we'll select my move instead and bring it over here. And try to center. And it does. Did you see how it sort of clicked into place? It does will automatically center on the piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide it over like this and approximate where I want the hole, right? And so I'm gonna put one on that side and I need another one on the other side. So make sure you unselect those pieces, you select another one and what I'm going to do, because this has this little piece here that makes it a little bit flexible so you can push the ball in, I want that on the other side. So what I'm going to do is now rotate, and I can either rotate grabbing these arrows, or I can go down here, and I find it a little bit easier to rotate using these uh, numbers this way. So I turn it around 180 degrees, and then I go back to move, and then I'm going to move it over into place here. Like so. And let's look underneath to make sure it's lined up the way I want it. Yeah, it's going to be about there. Now it doesn't have to be exact because the um, magnets will actually clip it into place pretty well. So here's one of the tricks though. Um, before you can what I like doing, and you don't have to do this, but um, what I like doing is clicking on both, sorry, it's this one, clicking on both of the pieces that I'm gonna uh, subtract, and I go ahead and I merge them so that they become one piece. And for some reason, that helps when I cut out the piece uh, from the wall. And so make sure, again, that you're, you haven't selected the wall, but that you've selected the negatives for the magnets and then hit subtract. And what it did was it cut out the holes for the magnets. Now, what you'll notice here is you can sort of see the hole already here, but not over here. And why is that? 
because for some reason, uh, 3D Builder sometimes doesn't cut it exactly and you will need to slice a layer off the bottom. I don't know why it does that and if you know, uh, go ahead and make a comment below for how I can um, skip this step. But what I found is in order for the holes to be shown, I need to again split the very bottom section. So this is the very bottom, right? I need to lift it up just a, a hair like this and then hit split and then go ahead and again push it back down so that it clicks on the floor and now you're able to see both. So I had to shave off just a tiny bit in order to expose the holes for the magnets to be pushed in there. So here you're done and all you have to do is save it and it will default to being a 3MF format which allows you to be able to re-edit the file if you want um, and keeps it in this format or oftentimes I will save it as an STL file so that I can directly transfer it over to my slicing software in order to print. So by using these subtract features I'm able to create the holes for the spikes in the wall also to create the slot that I need in order for this blade to fit in this spot. And that's basically how these features work. One of the other quick features I wanted to show you is the emboss feature in case you want to write anything on any of the files. Obviously I'm not going to do that on any of the dungeon files, but um, this is sort of a cool feature where you can write things on here by just hitting that emboss button and then just typing in what you want. And you can uh, move it around. Um, but let's say I wanted to put Gaming Geek there. Then I hit the emboss button right here. and it adds uh, whatever name or label that you needed to add. So that's a really fun feature for this as well. So go ahead and explore. You can uh, paint and put in different colors and shading. Uh, you can smooth out sort of uh, two pieces that you combine together. Uh, you can extrude down. You can hollow things out. So there's various things, but like I said, it is so simple that even the menu isn't that varied. Again, you're going to be giving up some versatility and functionality for simplicity. So there you go. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. If you're pursuing any of these things and you've never modified or changed up original STL files, this is a really easy way to step into that process. And as you develop, then you can step into more complicated programs that will give you more flexibility. But for now, I think 3D Builder has all the features that I need to modify the files to suit it to my needs. Like this video and subscribe. Check out my Patreon page. We're going to be giving some thank you gifts to patron supporters this next month. And so check that out by clicking in the links below. I also have links for all of these different systems uh, down below in the descriptions. And until next time, happy hobbying and happy gaming.